and welcome back to your Autism Game Plan. I'm Joya Vanderlaan, a family nurse practitioner, a functional medicine specialist, and an autism mom. Today we're going to talk a little bit about hypotonia, or low muscle tone. This is very common with children with autism, and so it's worth talking about, addressing, and seeing what can you do to help your child if they have symptoms of hypotonia. Some red flags that you may be aware of or may need to be aware of are the child may not be meeting their developmental milestones. For instance, they're not holding up their head um, as early as they should be. They're not sitting, or if they are sitting, maybe they're really hunched over because they're so weak. Maybe even if they're sitting or kneeling, they're using their elbows to prop them up because they can't, they don't have that trunk support to hold them up. Even things like not running or jumping or skipping on time can be reasons to investigate if your child has even mild hypotonia. And another thing, again, that I did not know until too late, um, but I know now, is eye movements. So eye movement disorder, whether the child has crossed eyes or lazy eyes or any kind of um, aberrancy or abnormality in how their eyes move can be a sign of hypotonia. And then not only would their eyes be affected, but many times then that can lead to investigating other parts of the body that might be experiencing hypotonia. So let's talk about mitochondria. There are mitochondria in our cells, in mammalian cells, in human cells. The mitochondria, as I mentioned earlier, are the powerhouses of energy production in the cell. What do our muscles need to move? Well, they need energy. And so if the mitochondria aren't working properly for various reasons, then there can be a deficiency in how well your child is moving and how strong their muscles are, how well they're able to sit up straight and support themselves. So what do mitochondria need in order to function well? Well, there are many nutrients that they need, including zinc, magnesium, iron, uh, B vitamins. They need um, CoQ10. They need uh, a, a vitamin and nutrient called PQQ. They need carnosine. They need carnitine. So all these nutrients have to be in your child's body at the proper levels in order for them to be able to produce energy in their mitochondria. This is why sometimes we'll do micronutrient or nutrient testing on children, um, adults even too, to see, you know, are things balanced? Are there the right levels of various nutrients and vitamins present in the body such that it will allow the body to function properly? Energy production is not the only thing that mitochondria are responsible for. A few other related things that they are responsible for include immune function and um, hormone signaling, both things that many times our autistic children are having issues with. Of course, our brain cells also have mitochondria. And so if our brain cells are not getting and producing enough energy, then of course we're going to have brain function and neurological problems. Again, symptoms then can often correlate with the symptoms that are occurring in our autistic children. And this is the reason why it's so important to ask these why questions and understand how does the body work? And is there something that we can do to, to help our children function at their best? Let's think for a second about how the body is made. And I wanna make this point because this is so important to really all the topics that we've discussed so far. If we think about the body and its different systems and how it works more as a web, spider web type of thing, than as separate individual compartments like the cardiovascular system, the digestive system, the neurologic system. If we think of it more like a web, it's easier to understand and appreciate that when we affect one thing, the whole web is affected. And so that can be good in the case where we're giving the child magnesium, which can help with methylation and brain functioning, constipation and uh, sleep, right? All these things, we, have, we did one thing and affected all these other things. Or it could be not so good a thing as in the case, for instance, of constipation. If a child is constipated, what else does that do? Remember the brain and the gut are very connected. So if the child is constipated affecting their gut, that can affect things like immunity and mood and neurotransmitters and behaviors, right? So one effect, one um, constipation effect that has an effect on the whole web, the whole um, 
body system, or at least more body systems than just one. So it's important to think of the body as a whole, not necessarily as separate pieces. And that viewpoint is part of what integrative or functional medicine does, is look at the amazing and curious and interesting ways that we are made and ask those why questions and figure out those whys. So hopefully I've helped you to at least know to ask these questions and maybe even give you some answers to these. Again, thanks for watching. And as always, remember, be gentle with yourself. You're doing a great job.